base setup. Um, you've got uh, three lights obviously on here. Um, uh, this is now in terms of your radio. You've got your TX light, which uh, the T stands for transmit. So that's how you know you've started your base successfully and you are transmitting corrections uh, from this specific base setup. Then obviously you've got your power light, the green one um, in the middle, and then the RX is for receiving. Like the T is for transmit, the R is for receive. This is if this specific TDL for 50 radio is being used as a repeater and not a base radio. So in other words, if you want to extend your range, uh, for instance, uh, let's say you are st you are you've got your base set up on this side of a copy, and you want to work on the other side of the copy. Now the copy is in your way, so you're not going to get radio because you don't have line of sight to mm -hmm. the base station from your receiver to your base station. So um, in the case of a repeater, you can put the repeater on top of the copy, so you can get signal to the repeater and the repeater can repeat the signal down to you on the other so side. So you would need two bases. Then. So then you'll need a base station and, and just, just a this. That's just it. the radio. Yeah. Oh, not so the this will receive signal oh, okay. and then transmit that same so signal. So you don't need so the... So RX and TX. RX and okay. TX. In this case, the RX light will not flash because it's not receiving radio signal. It's receiving corrections, yes, which it will transfer or, or, or which it will send to your rover via a radio link. Uh, but that corrections is coming through the cable. Okay, so uh, the cable sends the um, correction data to the radio, and the radio sends it via the air okay. to you through a radio signal uh, or radio frequency. So, um, uh, in terms of sending data through the air or through a cable, you've got radio link rates and serial bold rates. Okay, so whatever board rate you send the data from your receiver it needs to receive it from the receiver through the cable on the same rate and the same with the uh, radio link rate um, if I send the frequency at 4800 beats per second my receiver needs to receive it at the same rate otherwise there's a miscommunication okay so it's not just a frequency that needs to be the same on both the base and the rover um, your uh, radio link rate also needs to be the same okay okay as well as you'll see there's a few um, radio options in your survey styles uh, trim talk or tt 450s is usually the one we use trim talk is just the language it speaks uh, which should be understood by the receiver as well so yeah in terms of all of that um th this is basically um how the radio works um just by first glance that's what you can look for um, obviously um, it's an RTK system RTK standing for real-time kinematic uh, so you're getting real-time corrections uh, based on a radio link you're receiving it's just like VRS I don't know if you guys heard about VRS mm. there you also get corrections from physical base stations uh, across the country that's been set up on a permanent basis and you receive your corrections via the cell phone network so then you set up a Wi-Fi or a, a connection to your controller or a SIM card in your controller uh, from which you will then receive the uh, corrections from the permanent base stations across South Africa. Uh, it's uh, in partnership kind of with Trimble. They've uh, um, set up permanent base stations all over South Africa, but it's based on the ITRF patent. Uh, so there is a slight adjustment there. Is one better than the other? Uh, no, it just depends on what you want to do, what you okay. want to tie into. Okay. Uh, if you want to tie into our local trick beacons, then obviously it's not going to be 100% the same. But you can always use that correction and calibrate. Okay. So you can then have a translation Y, X and Z, uh, where it will adjust your position then based on that shift, okay. which you just told it to apply. Okay. So then you will still get the corrections and you will have a date and fix kind of in a way. Alright, so... Um, yeah, this is basically what the base station looks like. This is your base receiver. This receives your satellite positions. You set it on, this is your tri-brack, which is also set up on. Um, so obviously you set it up on a known position or a known peg, which you've got the coordinate of already. And um, as well as a vertical offset from that. So the base station will know exactly where it is in conjunction to the satellite geometry, the rover will know where it is in terms of the satellite geometry 
and you'll get these corrections to the specific um, points which you manipulate your repair. Through the radio link, you'll get these corrections. Can I ask yeah. on that point? So we don't have any trig beacons or actually any surveyed in points in our okay. area. So no. we used in the past just no. click on like known point, and so you can yeah. What what you what you referring to there is probably a year position. Uh, yes, a yes. year position. So you yes. go to key in and you say year. So then you will be set up on a autonomous position, okay. which is accurate up to between let's say six to fifteen meters. Okay. Up to thirty meters in elevation. Sure, that's quite uh, bad. Accurate, yeah. So it's autonomous. So okay. that's why, um, just it depends on what you want to do. You mm -hmm. know, for instance, uh, your cell phone, you have internal GPS on this as well. Somebody sends me a location to their home. What accuracy do I need? I need thirty meters. How mm -hmm. big is the house? Yeah. You understand. So, um, in terms of the scale of the house. I just want to know where the house is, so it can be accurate within 100 meters, or, or let's say at least 50 meters, depending mm. on how big the guy's yard so, is. So the here right. point is that accurate, the other points in your survey relative to it, like um, they are you more... Know, uh, let me put it this way, everything, your base will be started on an autonomous position. Yes. So everything you measure now will be accurate within let's say 30 to 50 mils yes. relative, relative to, to that, that okay. unknown position. So globally you will be accurate within 15 to 30 or 6, six to 15 meters, um, but uh, relative to that all your points will be accurate yeah. relative okay, to that. Cool. But relative glo to, to the global scale, yeah, so you might <laughs> be about 15, 30 meters, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so you started on an autonomous position or a year position, as we call it in the Trimble language. Okay. Um, and uh, if you set up tomorrow on a year position, that position could be there by a car. Okay. Or it could even be as close as a meter from where you were yesterday. It depends on where the satellites are at okay. that time of the day and where it tells you where you are. Okay. So um, that's why we need a base rover system and we need a known coordinate based on a uh, trig beacon value that we got somewhere or a road beacon, national road beacon or a, um, a w or even trig net. We can come in from trig net and we can occupy a point for let's say 30 seconds and then we'll be on the on the, on the Are the road trigger. beacons more common or found um, often or not? It depends. Really? Uh, I've used all of them in the okay. past. Uh, we just need to look like in our area. Steel, it's like little manuals. Mm -hmm. You know, you look them up. Uh, yeah, some okay. of them are tarred over. Uh, okay. Some of them are available. You fill in up and they've got a little peg. Uh, it's usually at you big intersections oh, okay. uh, in, in, the big t uh, or in the town center. Oh, okay. uh, they're, they're usually in the middle of the road. Uh, <laughs> okay. So we usually have guys with in the middle, <laughs> controlling traffic a little bit there. Okay. Uh, but we always don't choose the, the busiest intersection. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so you get that, and obviously your normal concrete, um, you know, beacons that you get from the, the, the land surveyors and so mm. on and so on. Um, and uh, then Trignet, obviously, if you got a cell phone connection, you've got an account with them. Mm. It's a free account. Uh, www.trignet.co.za you can get uh, you can log into there okay. Make okay. Yeah. okay so uh, this is why we need corrections because we with standard GPS even with high accuracy GPS receivers we will only get that accurate um, so we need a correction from somewhere okay so uh, our correction with a base rover system like this is it will come from a base uh, which is set up on a known position on a peg and we'll get those corrections via radio link to our, to our rovers. Okay. So this is ideally what the um, base setup will look like. Obviously not as skew as this <laughs> one. And obviously, and uh, not just on a on a unknown point. Unless you want to start on a year position, you're not too worried about accuracies. Um, you're just working on a local scale, local system where you just want to maybe calculate the volume of a stockpile or you just want to calculate the area of a certain place, uh, all the points you measure from there on out will be not on system completely, but it will at least be relative to each other, so you will be able to get an accurate uh, area or volume okay. on the said system. All right.